This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for September 30, 2023. And in the news this afternoon, a cocaine found in female bathroom at a Sangster airport. 16 pellets containing cocaine were found inside a section of a female restroom inside the Sangster International Airport in Montego Bay, St. James on Thursday. Reports are that about 3 p.m., detectives assigned to the Era 1 Narcotics Division were carrying out an operation inside the facility when the contraband weighing 0.8 kg was found. No arrests were made in connection with the seizure. Investigation continues. More than 1,200 pounds of ganja seized off St. Elizabeth Coast. More than 1,200 pounds of marijuana were seized during an operation by the Jamaica Defensive Force Coast Guard on Wednesday near Black River, St. Elizabeth. The JDF Coast Guard personnel reportedly intercepted the vessel in local waters while on air patrol. The JDF says a detailed search of the vessel yielded 20 larger bags of cannabis. Four foreigners were aboard the vessel. They were arrested during the bust. Two of the men were identified as Nicaraguan nationals. The authorities say the seizure represents a major dent in the illicit drugs for gun trade. The JDF says 1,272 pounds of ganja could be used to purchase up to 15 rifles or 30 pistols. Senator calls for death penalty for people who kill children. Government Senator Dr. Safar Longmore has called for the death penalty to be imposed on people convicted of killing children. She was contributing to debate on amendments to Child Care and Protection Act, which is sought to repeal Section 24 of the Act. According to Dr. Longmore, acts of violence against the children are becoming too common. She urged the lawmakers to adhere to Article 6 of the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, which, as she said, seeks to ensure that a child is entitled to their full and adequate development as the best as is afforded by that system. She argued that anyone who robs a child of that right by taking their life must be punished to the full extent of the law. Now, my personal thing is that we are adherent to especially Article 6 of the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, which seeks to ensure that a child is entitled to their full and adequate development as best as is afforded by that system. I'm putting that in a nutshell. So for me, anybody who murders or kills a child, especially in this way, that is who is to get mandatory sentencing. There is no excuse for the murder of our children. And if we are to contemplate and take this piece of legislation further in the protecting of our children, we should consider taking it to that full extent that there is absolutely no avenue for recourse for anyone who murders our children. The changes to the Child Care and the Protection Act were passed in the Senate without amendment. The repeal section 24 referred to the treatment of children deemed uncontrollable by the court and who were confined to penal institutions. With the changes, children with behavioral issues will receive a treatment at a therapeutic center. Cops hunt gunmen after a retired cop and two others killed. The St. James police have launched a manhunt for the killers of three men, including retired Jamaica Constabulary Force member Constable Patrick Hay, during an attack on the Tucker Main Road Wednesday afternoon. Hay reported the retired from the JCF in January this year. The two other deceased, both of St. James' addresses, are 73-year-old Neville Dixon of Rosemount Gardens and the 27-year-old laborer Glenroy Morgan of Tucker District. Reports are that on Wednesday afternoon, Gunmen traveling in a Toyota Voxy motor car opened a fire on a truck on which Dixon and Morgan were traveling. Both men were shot and killed. During the attack, the retired JCF member was caught by a stray bullet and taken to hospital where he later succumbed. Vendor shot in downtown Kingston Craft Market. 
A vendor was shot during a brisbane attack by gunmen in the craft market in downtown Kingston on Friday. Reports are that about 3.49 p.m., men posing as customers and armed with guns went to the market and asked for the woman by name. Minutes later, explosions were heard. The sounds of explosion sent vendors and customers scampering for cover. The police were called and during a search of the area, the wounded woman was found. Sources have reported that she was shot in the head. Grand spend shootings and murders trigger severe decline in businesses. Residents of Grand Spend in St. Andrew are bemoaning the negative effects of the latest upsurge in deadly violence on their community, and many insist that the crisis has no easy fix. Businesses in the area have seen sales dwindle in the last week after multiple murders in recent days, including a triple killing and a 48-hour curfew, which ended at 6 p.m. on Friday. Up to press time, there had been no indication that the security measure, which was imposed by the police to ease tensions in the area, had been extended. Betty told the news on Friday that a more long-term approach to fixing grand spend woes is needed, suggesting that a zone of special operations would be ideal. The goods not moving fast enough off the shelves, and the delivery trucks didn't come like they usually do, so we can't get the goods to buy and we entire livelihood gonna crash. We used to this and it's hard to fix, she said. Three men were killed about 3 p.m. on Sunday along Shortwood Lane. Two have since been identified as 45-year-old Shane Brooks and Gawain Harvey. The third victim remains unidentified. This followed last Saturday's murder and shooting, where reports suggest that brother of dancehall artist Miliki Jashi Clark was among the dead. Reports are that 39-year-old David Clark of Grand Spen Avenue and another man were shot in their community about 2.05 a.m. Clark was pronounced dead while the other man was admitted. This war that is going on will only further divide the place. By 7 p.m., the road them empty. Not even dog a walk the night road. No run robin can keep and no party because the police them don't want no gathering. The late night shop them, that business done. The whole place slope, one male resident told the news. The residents pointed to the popular Sunday event, Boom Sundays, which is now on pause. Boom Sundays not keep last week and it now keep this Sunday. It bring a lot of people to the community and even though an away Boom Sundays keep have war, a one grand spin, so people are going to stay away, the residents said. The economic implications are severe because several persons benefited from its weekly hosting. A police source told the news that the Grand Spend crime wave is complex and several persons are reported to leave in the space. One of the suspects held following the murder Sunday is from Grand Spend. Persons have begun to move out or just to leave the space. Some persons have not been seen since the incident, fueling further suspense. The police have a presence in the space and are conducting the necessary investigation, the senior lawman said. The police say they are satisfied that short-term intervention efforts are working to control the space. There was a major operation this week, and according to the lawman, from a safety and a security standpoint, things are under control. The news was unable to reach head of the St. Andrew North Police Division, Superintendent Sherika Service, for comment as repeated calls to her cell phone went unanswered. As of midnight to Thursday, the national murder toll since the start of the year stood at 1,031 victims. This represents a 12% year-on-year reduction. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.